In this lesson, we're going to demonstrate how to access the elements of a two-dimensional array using an extended example. So let's get started. We're going to create a two-dimensional array of grades and determine the average grade for a set of three students with five grades. So to start out with, we're going to determine the number of rows, which will be three, the number of columns, which will be five, so we'll create variables for those two. We need a variable for the total, which we'll set to zero. We need a variable for the average. We can set it to zero or not. We'll just go ahead and set it to zero here. Then we need some minimum and maximum values for grades. And I'll explain that again in just a minute. So we're going to say 50 and 100. We're going to use those when we determine grades with the random number generator. Speaking of which, we need a random number generator. So we'll do that now. Now we're ready to declare our array. So we're going to call it grades. And it's equal to new int rows calls. So this is going to be a three by five array. Now we're ready to assign random numbers to the array. So we're going to write a set of nested for loops, one set. The inner loop then will go through the columns. The outer loop went through the rows. And here's where we make the assignment. Now we're going to use a different formula for determining a random number. Let me write it out first and I'll explain it a little bit. The reason we're doing this is, is that if we just choose 101 as the argument to next int, then we'll get a number anywhere from 0 to 100. What we really want is a number in a minimum to maximum range. Generally speaking, grades don't fall much below 50 and can't go over 100 unless we're giving extra credit. So to make the grade seem more reasonable or more natural, we're going to set a min at 50 and a max at 100. And then following this formula, we'll be sure to get a random number in that range from 50 to 100. So that will populate our array with grades. Now we're ready to display those grades just so we can see what they are. So we'll write another loop. Very same pattern as before. A little different. We're going to have more than one statement in the outer loop, so I need a brace there. Then we begin the inner loop. Write out the grade, then a space, and then between each set of grades, we want to write a blank line. So we'll do a print line and close it. And actually, what we probably should do is write out the student number at least so we'll know which student we're talking about. So let's do this. OK, let's take a break and compile and run this and make sure everything's working fine before we continue on. We'll save the file, clear the screen, compile it, compile this fine, and then run it. All right, so there we see our grades. Student 1 has 55, 52, 70, 79, and 54. Student 2 has 65, 78, 91, 92, 77. An interesting range. And student 3 has 95, 57, 51, 75, and 54. Again, an interesting range and not very indicative of real life students, but it'll work for our simulation here. So at this point, we're ready to compute the average grade for each student. So what we need, once again, is yet another nested for loop. Again, we're going to have a multiple statement here. Then we begin our columns. And in this inner loop, we're computing the total of the grades. So we're moving through the column and taking a grade and adding it to the total. Then when we get to the end of the column, we're ready to compute the average. So the average is equal to the total divided by the total number of columns, which we know is 5. That gives us our average. Then we can write out the average. And 
And there's the average. Close the parentheses. Then we also need to set the total back to zero because we're ready to do another row and set the average also back to zero. Although that would be handled in this line right here. I'll put it in there anyway just to make it clear that we're starting over with a new student. And then we close out the for loop, the outer loop, and that should be it. So let's save. Go back to our DOS window. Clear the screen. Compile again. And it looks like we left off a closing parenthesis in the for loop. Okay. All right. So let's clear the screen. Try it again. Left out a plus sign this time. There we go. All right. Clear the screen. Compile again. This time it's successful. And you can take a look at each set of grades and the average for the student one. The average is, we needed a space right there, but I'm not going to fix that. 62, which looks about correct. For the second student, the average is 76. And for the third student, the average is 80. So the way we access data in a two-dimensional array is primarily based on the fact that if we're storing data in a tabular form, then each row represents a record for a student or whatever the unit of measurement is. So the inner loop of a nested for loop always accesses each individual column and doing something with that data. In this case, we're adding it to the total right here. And then once we've gotten that total, then we go back to the outer loop, perform the rest of our computations, and then iterate through the next column. You could also do column-based information rather than row-based. For example, if we were interested in finding out what the average per test was, if these were five tests, then we could reverse the rows and the columns in our nested for loops and determine the average per test. But I'll leave that as an exercise for you to work. But trust me, it's just a matter of flipping the loop around and everything else stays the same. So that wraps up our discussion of two-dimensional arrays. And now we're ready to move into our exercises and we'll start off working with single-dimension arrays.